Hello there, and welcome to the Natalie and Dennis Show Podcast. Hey, happy Friday! Woo! Woo! 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Last week we posted a little late. 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Can I just say thank you so much to Nicole for DMing us on the podcast because she was like, hey, is there no podcast? No podcast today? Question mark. And Dennis was out and about with his dad working on some car stuff. And I was like, Dennis, oh, changing the oil. what's going on? Where's the podcast? He's like, oh, shoot. I totally forgot to like hit publish. So that happened. We were talking off camera right before we started uh, about forgetting our own names and how <laughs> sometimes we just like space out on the most basic things in life even stuff that you obviously know like your name i was mentioning how that has happened to me before and if somebody has not experienced that i wouldn't believe them either it happened to me i was at a dance class and we were just signing up and the lady for some random reasons like what's your name and i was like and you froze <laughs> and she's like looking at me i'm like oh my god i'm so sorry i just forgot <laughs> like i literally and i wasn't even nervous or anything i was like what the is my name what do you think causes blanking <laughs> out like that is I it you just get kind of get like caught off guard you you get asked a question maybe you don't expect but you always know what your name is it took me a moment to be like it takes the, the brain a while no, to catch you know, up you know what it was i was so in shock that i couldn't figure it out like i was in shock that i had forgotten did you panic i did panic and then that causes the blanking out yeah that's kind of scary i don't know maybe i should look into that it's happened to me where i get asked like a super simple question and then like I, it's at the tip of my tongue and I know it, but I just can't say it because then it gets kind of awkward because it took so long to say it. And then it's like, oh, damn, like now I got to say it. And then it's it's a whole ass process of like answering. What else is also embarrassing to me is whenever I'm introducing someone with somebody else and I forget their name. I forget people's names all the time. I'm like, oh, uh, here's my friend connecting. Oof. You could just tell. Yeah. They say the number one sign of respect is knowing people's names. I've talked at the gym to maybe two people. They've both said their name to me. I, I, for the life of me, I just can't remember their names. I know. It just slips out. But hey, I don't know. Dale Carnegie does talk about this and how to win friends and influence people. The sweetest thing you can tell someone is their own name. Yay. Yeah. So it is, right? Guys, right w. before this, I was dealing with some back pain. I've actually been dealing with back pain since Friday. It's currently Wednesday. So I've had back pain for five days now. It's been pretty crippling. You make yeah. it sound like you're okay, but Dennis has not been sleeping well. It's hard to breathe. It's hard to breathe. You've Ooh. been, yeah, you, you, it was after the gym, right? Yeah. So little baby. I was, he um, is. I was doing some research into my whole knee issue. And then a lot of it is contributed to glute strength. First of all, before getting into the back pain, okay, mm -hmm. why are some exercises labeled as like a, f a female exercise? Mm -hmm. Like why are hip and ass workouts considered like, oh, if he's doing it, he's looking a little sus. Like he's looking kind of weird. Do you feel that way though? <laughs> she really, I don't care. Right. I also think, I think it might be in your mind. But I do notice when I was at, at 45, there was um, days where they would split the class and they would say, whoever wants to do glutes and bottom half, go here. Whoever wants to do the upper half, go there. And yeah. most like more than not, it was all the guys here, all the girls here. I think that that also contributes to guys looking a certain way, like getting chicken legs because they don't tend to work out legs. And there's also that running joke of, oh, leg day. It's so hard. Everyone hates leg day, but not necessarily. I like leg day. Mm -hmm. but the thing is, I'm implementing. For, for me, it's kind of hard leg. leg kind of yeah, I eating. love leg day. I hit leg every day. <laughs> yeah. I think because it contributes to, to sports and soccer. And like yeah, if your yeah. legs are strong, then you're going to do better. That's my opinion on that. Yeah. yeah. But right now, right, I'm at the gym and I'm doing abductor and, and hip adductor. And so you got to open up your legs wide, right? <laughs> yeah. So first of all, for girls, I feel like that's uncomfortable because their they're stuff's out, right? And then a lot of people use yoga pants and stuff. And so uh, I feel like those kinds of machines should be actually kind of secluded in corners. So mm -hmm. fe females don't feel like they got that gaze on them. Right. And then as a guy, I just feel like weird spl splitting my legs that way, that wide. I think in general, that exercise is kind of uncomfortable. And then when it comes to glutes, like hip thrusts or glute bridges are also, I feel odd. I think you're not the only one though. I think a lot of people are subcon or subconscious, self-conscious mm -hmm. at the gym, which is why they, there's actually a lot of girl gyms now. I've heard about that. Because girls will feel so uncomfortable at a gym. 
I do think that obviously I, I believe it's all in your head. I believe because I have days where I feel like I'm like, I'm not going to let this get to me. And like with anything, any scenario in life, yeah. let, let's say we're rock climbing, right? Right. Daddy? Mm-hmm. And like, sometimes you can be very hyper focused on people watching you and you get nervous, yeah. but there's other times where you're like, oh, whatever, like I'm allowed to fall. I'm allowed to make mistakes. Same with going to the gym. You're allowed to not know what you're doing, but it does feel uncomfortable. And I think one thing that has helped me mm-hmm. is really those TikToks about when you are the main character in life, everybody feels like they're the main character in their own life. So nobody is as focused on you as you think that people are. Girl, nobody, everybody's nobody staring is. at me. No, seriously. I'm, nobody. Doing, I'm doing, doing hip thrusts and everybody turns and just stares <laughs> at me while I'm doing hip thrusts. No, nobody is that, that focused. I, I'm actually kidding. I, I obviously know that no one's looking at me as I do hip thrusts. It's all an internal struggle within myself to say, hey, this is just a normal average workout that anyone can do. And just because if targets you like your butt, it doesn't mean anything. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yes. This might be completely in a different direction, but I kind of want to go there. Mm-hmm. I saw this TikTok that was talking about women. This lady was 40. Yeah. And she was saying how in her life and in many women's life, there are three stages where you look at yourself and you just notice there's a difference in you. Mm-hmm. I've already experienced that one time. Mm-hmm. where I look at myself and I'm like, my face doesn't look right. Like it doesn't look the way it used to. Right. Supposedly <clears throat> once you are in your like 39, like about to get to 40, there's a moment where you do not recognize yourself. Mm. Like no. what she says that it happens to every woman. You walk by yourself and you're like, you almost like, you, could, <laughs> you, scare, yeah. you scare yourself. <laughs> no, but you, you just obviously start changing. Yeah. Have you experienced that? No. There was right. a dermatologist that I saw on TikTok too saying that it hits you like a ton of bricks. It's just like so sudden. Yeah. And it's from one day to the next. Like you you hit 35. I think she f- said 35 was the age. Mm-hmm. 35, 36. Where you look at yourself and you're like, you know, those old pictures of me, they don't match me anymore. No, they don't. And I'm basically just a different person. Let like you have the you. essence of who you were, but you're not yourself anymore. Yes. And then I saw this other one where it was her. She's 27 with her niece. She's mm-hmm. like 13. And so she was saying how she's about to enter her old like adolescence. And she, yeah. it's like her prime and that she's about to decline type of vibe. Mm-hmm. I do feel like when I was mm, 18, 19, 20, like that age. I feel like that was my prime. Well, in the old days, like in the sense of you would there every time I went out, I would get hit on like every time. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed I get hit on less now, which is nice for me because the way you dress, Natalie. Well, okay, no, but listen, listen. Did you not tell me today that you walked to get the mail and it was so embarrassing to walk by our neighbor because you look (laughs) like trash? (laughs) (laughs) I I even apologized and I felt so bad because she felt bad for me that she's like, oh, don't worry. I had to take my girl to the to school today and blah, blah, blah. I would say it's not age. I think it's also. It, the, oh okay the way you you i feel like when you're 18 19 17 whatever mm-hmm. you probably put a little bit more effort you probably were more stylish okay and no, i it's it's a swagger thing you know what i feel in like women it's swagger i do think you have like a prime in your life i do think oh, i disagree i think that i was, i think i was the prettiest back then i think right okay you're no yeah this is what allowed I'm to believe yeah. that yeah and because I just like notice the difference. I also recall there's a lot of women that say as the older that you get, the more invisible they start to feel. I don't the more know, invisible. Man. But that's I what don't that, know. and let me tell you, not that I'm feeling invisible yet, but I've definitely been experiencing less like cat attention. calls, less attention. Yeah. And in my 18, 19, and 20, I would struggle to go, go out because it was I even got harassed. Like it was bad. Okay. It made me afraid to go out. How about I reverse that? Okay. And I say that maybe it's changed from the cat calling perspective of men. Maybe men are being more mm-hmm. sensitive to how they approach women. I hope modern I hope day men. I, yeah. I can say it can go both ways. Either. <laughs> and I don't want to say that you're getting uglier. No, but. Either that. 
or <laughs> or I mean, what's your face right now? He's like, <laughs> <laughs> or men are being more uh respectful to no, everyone no i personally this is what i feel and there's nothing wrong with that yeah. i definitely feel like i've aged and i'm not the like typical type of like appeal now that's how i feel and there's nothing wrong do you ever that. go out with your with your ring do you go out with your ring maybe at your age people assume that you're married or, or already with someone i think when younger yeah. girls it's always like oh She's probably dating. No one expects a young person to be married. I think that also has to do with the cat calling. But I still get mistaken for being younger. Um, But what I'm trying to say is it's made me feel more comfortable now going out. Whereas before I was so afraid because literally every single freaking time there was like a weird interaction. Not one, not two, but like multiple. I don't know. And it's maybe you make the scenes in your your hair and. The what? The what? You made the change in your hair. <laughs> is it my hair, though? Maybe <laughs> your, your hair is the reason people hair. aren't catcalling you. Wait, no, how no, is no. my hair? In la cabeza. Entonces, ah, in my se head? Se hace la ca- los escenarios en la cabeza y cuando se hacen los escenarios <laughs> pasa. Oh, okay. Porque se, se lo imagina tanto, tanto, tanto. Vamos a pasar. Como and you attract things. Maybe. I think yeah. that there's so... Maybe. Just like every other topic we have here, yeah. I tend to be the one that's like, there, there's something deep deeper to that. You know, I feel like there's something deeper to this. But here's why it was so weird before versus mm-hmm. now, mm, okay. because there would be moments where you would just leave me like as in like you would go do your own thing. Yeah. And then I'd come back and I'm like, Dennis, I literally just got hit on. It was so uncomfortable. Okay, which is possible. But now it doesn't matter if you leave me, I don't get hit on. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I just think it's funny. I don't you, know. It's you know, just, it's cool to age. And I just think that it's an interesting thing that ties in with everything I've been hearing older women talk about. So. So some dudes are into older women, man. No, I know that too, but I mean, I, I just think it's interesting. That's all. I uh, this is also off topic. Yeah. But what you just and what that we just said is that it could be like a state of mind, memory, attracting things, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You and I had a like a a small argument recently, mm-hmm. and for some reason, the reason the conversation led into how often you do things for me to help me to do stuff, mm-hmm. and so. One thing that bothers Natalie a lot is when I leave um, pre-workout and creatine out before I go to the gym. (laughs) And so I documented and started being very, very specific about putting it away. Uh, In the argument that we had, I told Natalie, um, we were arguing, and then you brought up the fact that you have to do that for me. Mm -hmm. Put them away every day. And I said, Natalie, the last time you put that stuff away for me was like over a month ago. Mm. And it's interesting how... You, in your mind, and maybe still do, Mm -hmm. believe that every single day you're putting that stuff away from me, right? So I wanted to ask you, first, why why is it so bothering to you to have to put that stuff away? And then secondly, why do you feel like, because we've come to the conclusion that you don't put it away every day, or maybe you still believe that you do. (laughs) I want to understand that. But like I, like it's. It's in your imagination. It's in your mind. I want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So the first thing, why does it bother me? To put the stuff away. It's one additional thing I have to do in my day. It sidetracks me, right? Yeah. It's a small thing, but small things start to add up. For example, if you leave your shoes where they're not supposed to be, if you leave your shirt where it's not supposed to be, if you don't put the keys where they're supposed to be, now I have three additional things I have to figure out plus that. So that creates a resentment towards you of like, just get it together. You know, Mm. that's one. Mm -hmm. The second one is it honestly really terrified me when you said, Natalie, I have been putting away every day because then that makes me feel like, am I just losing my memory? Like it really has. It's kind of startled me a little bit. That. Um, So you wholeheartedly still believe no, not I, every day. No, not every that day. That I leave it every day. Yeah. No, not every day. But in that moment, in the argument, you were talking to me as if I did leave it every day. Because out. I believed it then. I think what really got me is the time that you said um, there was a bottle that we were fighting about. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Dennis, put this bottle away. I've seen it every single day. It's an eyesore. And then you check the cameras and you had just put it one day ago. Not, no, not even one day ago. I had put it the night before. 
But you you so said that, that you, it had been there for like five days. Yeah, and that's why it creeped me out. But I'd rather not get into that because like, what if I have like memory issues? <laughs> like that's kind so of we, scary. So we came to the conclusion that it could be an ADHD thing. I don't think it is. Or maybe you just say it for then it just put it away, you know? Uh -huh. But it, it, por, Dennis, no, but it's I not. really did think oh, that yeah. it was there. That's okay, why when okay. he showed me the video, I was a little bit like, it felt like a movie. I was like, oh, I showed I've her the NAS cameras day. and it had only been there for like half a day. But, but here's one thing they do say about ADHD. They say that we have no concept of time. They do say that. Yeah. So, which is, I why think happens to me for real sometimes. Yo tengo consentimiento del tiempo, just pass. Yeah, because David also has ADHD. What? I mean, one thing that really helps me is like time blocking. And that's why even when you were like, Dennis, when are you coming? I put three minutes on the clock because I could just be here not knowing what I know. what's going on. I know you guys. You, you know? could you guys could just yeah. sit here and talk about yeah. nothing. Yeah. What I what worried me about that was that A, a lot of our fights are contributed to a disalignment in reality you know and yes. so i can argue with you all day every day about doing something or not doing something but mm -hmm. then if you really believe that i did something there's really no way for me to argue against you unless i bring about proof the, the nest camera proved that i was right yeah i could whip out the cameras and show you about the pre-workout and stuff i i feel like it's unnecessary to mm -hmm. i would hate to resort to having to show you proof every single time that we have any argument about anything, you know, but I'm happy that you saw how serious I was mm -hmm. about the fact that that's never out and that you accepted it. And then, and then, okay, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. It still creeps me out though. I don't like that that happened because yeah. it made me aware of like, what is my concept of time? <laughs> like I literally felt it was there for five days. It's it's like just so, to re reiterate it again, guys. It's, imagine you feel like every time you go into the kitchen, there's a powder or something or protein out. And you have to put it away. And then someone points out to you that it's never been there. Yes. And in reality, in the past month, it's only been, maybe been out once. OK, let's move past this. this <laughs> it honestly does scare me a little bit. So I'd rather not. That, 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 well, that's odd. Yeah, okay. it is odd. So we're actually going to move on to the first this years couple later. topics. Le, le, let me give you a, a song for that. So yeah. we changed the mood. Oh, we changed the oh, mood. I got like, you guys. I think deep diving into our psyches is pretty intense. Okay. So intense. So intense. Anyways, for today's episode, we had planned to just talk about things we've learned about each other. Now that we're, we've been married for so long, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes when people get married, they lead into it with assumptions and ideas and all That's sorts of true. stuff. So That's true. a lot of men were asked, what's something you thought all women do, but now it turns out that they don't do that. What you had in my, in your mind. Mm -hmm. And then I also said, Hey, Natalie, let's spin that. Like what did, what are assumptions you had of men? Yeah. That obviously isn't true. Right. right. Um, there's this one particular guy who assumed that all women brush their hair all the time. I it's, could see that. Though, yeah. Why you would assume that? Because every day, no. <laughs> ¿Usted lo cree que las mujeres se cepillan el pelo todos los días? Yes. And that's not a thing. It's not a thing. That's it's not, not real. A, I sometimes will go a few days without brushing my hair. What is the point of brushing Ooh. hair? <laughs> Wait, I don't <laughs> even know. That. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know. What is the point of brushing her hair? Yeah, what's the I point of brushing her hair? I, I, I have no idea. I mean, I guess like to style it, but you don't always have to brush your hair to style it. So people said that brushing hair is actually to move the oil from the roots into the hair. Ah. And so you brush your hair not only to detangle, but also to spread the, the oil in hair right. to make it shiny hair or whatever. Yeah. One thing I found through TikTok, I thought I was the only person experiencing this, is the lack of cutting your toenails. Bro, what? I feel like a lot of guys. That we, <laughs> imagine we're like, take off your shoes and show us your toenails. Like guys, uh, girls have been chatting about how guys don't take the time to cut their toenails. Okay, I just got to say this. Most men don't wear open-toed shoes. I feel like women have to be tip top, <laughs> tip top Ew. in terms of feet because they wear sandals. There, it's people go to pedicures. It's a constant 
showing of the legs. I just cannot because when's the, when do I ever go out in sandals? Never. So I don't have to stay on top of my nails. And for, second of all, toenails don't grow at the same speed as hand nails. It's they different. grow faster. No, clearly. no, they tell t- me slower. how. Dennis at night will sometimes like put his feet next to me, and when I feel those, I'm like, cut your toenails. <laughs> No, <laughs> last time I had just cut them and you said that I had to cut them and I said, no, I then cut them. file them. Well, there's something wrong with that. <laughs> so so you, when was the last time you cut your toenails? Be honest. I right knew now. it. I knew it. <laughs> oh. like, I don't. Pues yo nunca me los corto, pero yo me los arranco. Pues yo me arranco. Arranca. What do you mean you rip it off? <laughs> yes. Like, it's because I'm so. That, okay. No sé, es Wait, como David, futbolista. But- no, antes como okay, okay. Hold up, hold First up. First of all, we're gonna cl- we're gonna <laughs> fix that before you have a girlfriend again. Ooh. That's not cute. Second of all, I'm gonna get. Thank you for being honest. Yeah, because it could be on- honest. Mm. But with rock climbing, David, doesn't it hurt you? I was about to say that. No, no. Like I don't have a longer. I don't have longer. I just. I tell you, like when I get when I see it's getting longer, I just. What the fuck? Yeah. You peel your nails off? That's it. I don't understand that. And, okay. You, Let me you tell you. What I what I say? No, we don't understand. <laughs> For so me, scared. I end up cutting my nails when I'm playing a lot of soccer. Like the nail pushes against the end of the cleat and it starts to hurt. And I'm like, okay, it's time to cut the nail. Mm. I've never ripped my nail off. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> That's normal. Do you own? I saw, I saw my cold soccer players. <laughs> Bro, I don't know, man. That's yeah. odd. In Colombia, normal. Yo los veía jugando y yo se, terminamos el partido. Se quitan las medias, nos íbamos. Pues no, no. Terminamos el partido normal para colocarnos las chanclas y, y empezaron a arrancarse las uñas y las tiraban. Y usted, el del amigo suyo, y el Me amigo, dice, o sea, usted. Fuck? No, yo no quitaba a nadie, guys. That shit was nasty. That's gross, guys. That's nasty. All your friends are nasty. That's gross. No, that's not my friend. He's my soccer player, you know, my team. I, I can't do anything. I don't Just know. Just playing a position, you know. Anyways, a lot of men assume that all women buy a lot of clothes. Right. And so just, I mean, it's sometimes it's like the perception of gender. Like you just assume you're stuck on the nail thing. You still can't believe it. <laughs> this is going down for the book. I can't believe it. Anyways, a lot of men believe that their women or wives or whatever would buy clothes. Turns out that, you know, there's women out there that don't buy as many clothes. Okay. Tell me how, um, whenever I used to have like sleepovers, yeah. right. Some girls were shocked. To hear that I wouldn't sleep with a bra on or underwear. Mm. How is that not? Why would I sleep with a bra? I mean, maybe it's taught from and their underwear. parents or their mom or like. Do you, well, guys, do you guys think that's weird? To sleep with bra and underwear? Yeah. No, that's not weird. I think it's weird. No, I don't, don't think, think it's weird. weird. No. Tell me that. Yeah. Because that's comfortable, no? Brasil. Con un brasier. Oh, dormir con un brasier. Eh, que una mujer duerma con un brasier. Oh, so it's weird. It's weird, yeah, right? Yeah, that's weird. I feel, I feel like... They were saying, shocked that uh, I wouldn't do that and that a few of my other girlfriends... Like, some girls actually sleep with a bra. Okay. That's uncomfortable. There was, there's a very popular clip of a podcast where the two people who were talking, one of them comes to the, to the idea... He, he, I don't know why this dude thought that you're supposed to catch your poop while it's falling. You told me that. That is insane. Right? So this guy would grab toilet paper and catch his shit midair. Why would he do that? And then like put it, put it in the, in the, in the water. I don't <laughs> know if he would just put it in the water or like what? Right? <laughs> and then the girl on the show. <laughs> the, yeah. Yeah. And then the girl on the show was like, I cannot believe you've been grabbing your own shit. And he said that that's why everybody has to wash their hands after going to the bathroom because he caught, he assumed everyone was grabbing shit in the air. Okay, I'm feeling queasy. I, th- I think there's a lack of something in terms of parenting here. I don't, I don't think that as a parent, you should just let your child just do things without giving them like a first, like an entry lesson into stuff. Like... Obviously, it's in his potty training or whatever, unless he's lying because it's what almost unbelievable. Prefer? The shell falling down and split you in your ass or <laughs> grabbing grabbing your in the hair. What do I prefer? 
¿Qué harían ustedes? Gra ¿Cogerlo en el aire o que le chicleten la nalga así? Pero agua, agua. Uh, the backsplash. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna grab shit in the air. Usted coge el, pop el popón en el aire. Oh, of course not. You wanna, you know, ask the question. Uh, I mean, I hate both, to be honest. <laughs> I'm not gonna answer that. <laughs> uh, you know, the backsplash with the water is awful, though. But that I'm not gonna grab poop awful. in the air. No, there's no way. Okay, anyways. I'm shocked. Uh, Back to what I was trying to say, right? No. The parenting. I feel like there's a parenting All issue. Right, but let's talk about that because I do think that raising a child is very complex. You're not going to know everything about your kid. And they might start doing things that they think is normal. And maybe you never catch. No. Because it's a parenting the, issue, Natalie. If you don't ever put your child to sleep, to bed, mm -hmm. you don't tuck them in, you don't do, then they're not going to know like the normal routines before it, brushing your teeth, doing this, doing that. But can I tell you Wouldn't something? Wouldn't it be odd if you find out that a friend doesn't brush their teeth in the middle, in the morning or at night, they brush it like in the evening, in the middle of the day? That's not normal routine. But here's the thing. For example, I didn't have that privilege where my dad or my mom put me to bed because they were working. So not everybody has that. You know, it must be nice. Uh, I don't know, man. You're telling me that none of those girls that went to bed with bras on were told by their mom, hey, like, you gotta leave, leave your tatas out. Like, no, I don't know. I don't know why. I almost maybe think that they saw their parents do it. So. Well, let me tell you then. Why were you going to sleep without a bra? Because my dad and my mom were always like, you should sleep comfortably. Pa parenting. You know? Yeah. Know, I'm telling you. See? So... Again, to the root of the problem. Yeah, it is. Yeah. All right. Uh, a lot of men assume that women would lactate out of just one hole in the nipple. What hole? Like the tip of the nipple. Oh. In reality, women lactate out of multiple ducts around the entire areola. You no, know, I didn't know that either. I didn't know that for a long time either. See, I think it's just like partaking or going through life and then eventually Here's the one. coming to something. I didn't know this because when, when my friend was pregnant... And she had her baby. I, this was maybe like my early 20s. I didn't know how your nipples get. Long. They look like almonds. That's crazy. <laughs> I never knew that they change. Yeah. Wow. I didn't know that either for a long time until I think I was it was shocked. like a family member that was breastfeeding around me. or I can't remember. But the point is, they look odd. They, they look, look totally different. different. They look totally different. Yeah. And, and unless you've been around people that are breastfeeding, you're you not going to know. know that. Right. I didn't know that. There's a funny TikTok of like who the first person who found out like that cow milk tastes good. <laughs> and then this guy just shows up with like milk all over his mouth. And he's like, guys, you're not going to believe it. But like, it's good. What's up with that? That was a bit. I mean, I'm sure he didn't do that. Well, no, I think that that's how it happened. That's so weird. It's got to be. <laughs> that's gross. That's weird. And so that leads into the next topic that I want to talk about. That would hit me with some a little bit of music, please. I got you. Same song from last time. I like that. Uh, what's the grossest thing <laughs> your partner does, but you have to accept? Well, if I was David's partner, <laughs> definitely the toenail. No, thing. because I'm I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> I will find you. <laughs> I gotta throw and myself. That's gonna be even weirder. I gotta throw myself under the bus for this one. What? What? Uh, you know, something gross that I do. I pick out my skin a lot. It's actually, it has a name. It's like an issue. Yeah, a lot of people do that. I, I pick at the skin around my thumbs, pick at my lips. And I think I, to a certain extent, it's gross because it comes to a point where sometimes it bleeds. And so it can be bad, like overall just nasty, you know, and not hygienic. Yeah. Well, throw yourself under the bus. I don't want to state something about you, but do you want to say something? Do you want to share something know. gross you might do? Not really. This is like show and tell. <laughs> <laughs> I think I expose so much myself in this podcast. Yeah, you so did, I prefer being be quiet. In this oh my god, let me think. What's a habit that you just know is not Hygienic appropriate or what? appropriate gross that I'm you just, you're think. willing to share? Oh, I know one. Well, you hate this. What is it? When I take off my nails and just leave them around. I am shocked at the amount of nails I find in the washing machine. In the car. I go to sleep. That's pretty I gross. I feel something really hard around. <laughs> They're like fake nails. And then nails, I go like this and it's nails. like fake nails. Fake nails everywhere. And you don't that throw them out. Yeah, what's up with that? I need to get better at that. Q-tips? 
I do throw my Q-tips out. I find sometimes. Where do you find them? On the floor. No way. I throw them out every time. Tissue paper? I throw it out in the toilet every time. Oh, the ones that the, the ones that you nose. blow your nose. Yeah. yeah. I <laughs> sleep in all this stuff, guys. Oh. Like like I find nails, Q tips, tissue paper but in bed. Let's, I'm let's, like, let's talk about the tissue paper. It's not as bad as you think. Okay. Every night I put a little piece of tissue on my side because I for some reason my asthma and just my breathing gets really bad at night so sometimes i will blow into it but there's nothing in there i basically but but it does just stay there and i'm sure that's annoying you did you just say you blow your nose and nothing comes out and so you keep the tissue paper for another blow where am i gonna go with it yeah it's just gonna be there i'm sleeping at night i need it and i'm just like (laughs) (laughs) i think um living with someone you start to get annoyed by things that aren't gross Mm -hmm. but the they begin to get on your nerves. Well, this isn't my story to tell, but I'm going to tell it more. <laughs> <laughs> I have a friend who started dating this guy and actually, um, you know, he does rock climbing. OK, so the shoes tend to smell bad if you don't refresh them very often. Yeah. So she lives in a small space and um, he likes to leave those shoes right at the front. And the she, rock climbing shoes? Yeah. And she's like, oh, my God, his feet smell so bad. For a while, they were mm. having issues about it. And she had to, like, go up to him and be like, you stink. Like, wash your, <laughs> wash your feet. You know? Yeah. That must be pretty. Ugh, oh. What? Um, the, That kind of leads me into the confrontation <clears throat> and then the willingness to change or to accept how serious it is once confronted. Yeah, because you could get really offended. Yeah. By something that you think is so normal. It, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I've I've been confronted by you by about things. I can't think of it right now. I can't like just state what it is. Sometimes I put it off as like, oh, she's just being silly or, or she's too sensitive. It's not really that big of an issue. Yeah. Then when it comes to like a second or third time, then you're like, oh, yeah, that actually like could potentially bother her. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to make a change. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> so did he change? He did change. Do you? Th- well, these things are kind of deep rooted, though. Do you think it'll come back? <laughs> <laughs> I think she real she made him realize how disgusting it was Okay. that he had to change or he had to move out. How? How do you a lot of these things tend to be habits yeah. that people grow? What do you think or what have you found to be like the best solution toward forcing someone to break a nasty habit? Hmm. To me, it's calling them out publicly in front that of someone is else. So messed up, honey. Don't depending ever do on, that. on who the other person is and how bad the situation is. Don't ever do that. My mom had this issue where she she would like shake her hands like a fucking like a chicken, right? And so my dad and I got together and we were like, okay, I told her many times, I think it's like, it just like becomes a habit. Um, like how do we solve this? Like she doesn't care too much. I've told her many times, how do we go about it? And so whenever my, my idea was whenever she would do it, Mm -hmm. I'd call her out on it in the moment. Okay. Gotcha. Right. I wouldn't shout it. I'd be like, look, you're like, you're doing it. You're doing it. Yeah, you're doing yeah, it. So yeah. every time they do it, you call them out so that they start to realize how often they do the thing. But isn't that I get it because I would I do that with my dad. Oh, but that's true. What you say? I get it now. Yeah. Those are mama, see. Oh, you you've seen that her do yeah, that? Yeah, really? Of course, of yeah, course. she does. I've never it. seen her do that. I don't really? know. If she yeah, feels she, hot or something, but no, like, like she like shakes. See, sí, yeah. I've never como seen como that. Así. Yeah, she does that. <laughs> but see, I think the thing with this. And I'm going to be a little bit like biased because I've done this with my dad as well. But I think it's kind of I think it's wrong to do it. It's like an intervention. Because I think it's bothering you more than it bothers the person. You're doing it for your own comfort. Yeah. But at the same time, you're also afraid that they'll go out and do it in public and make it even more normal Uh than what it is. (laughs) Yeah. Your dad whipped out one of those like teeth things at soccer one time. Dude. (laughs) (laughs) If there's my dad is bad mannered ew. i tell him ew, brother and you know what the worst part brother, is <laughs> he doesn't give a fuck <laughs> he doesn't care i do wonder is it age no is this just personality i, I yeah. can promise you they did it when they were younger 
Oof. It just it's just in there. It's rough. It's rough. It's, it's rough to it's deal with people like that. So yeah, I think I do think that there comes a point in time where you have to inter- be, there has to be an intervention when it comes to something and and first of all, you have to think to yourself, okay, how annoying really is it? How bad is it that they're actually doing it? Has it become a psychological issue? Like are they doing it too often? And then if they were to stop, like obviously does it really benefit anyone? Anyone? If they stop, you know, I still think it's more selfish than it is trying to help the person. Like, I still think if you go about doing something like that, I think it's more selfish Mm. because you're trying to make it good for you to live with that person or to live around that. Are there any habits that you've tried to break me from having? Mm, uh, When you were having a lot of Dunkin Donuts. That could be, that's another one actually, yeah. That was a really hard one to break because you were not happy with that Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you were literally angry. So what I had to do, I had to replace it with at-home coffee that yes. I make myself. Yes. And so I still go to Dunkin', just not every day, mm-hmm. right? It, like That was a cycle too that I was in. That was a really hard one because it doesn't seem so bad from the outside looking in, but... Once you start to break it down, it's like, well, this is expensive. This isn't good for you. The this health and the all the other stuff, yeah. But it's hard when somebody has to accept that. The thing is that we started seeing Duncan as like a social thing. Like I would go That's true. to go somewhere, to yeah. just hang out, to be with my parents. Oh, let's go have a coffee. Right. But it became like an everyday cycle thing. And then it was like I needed coffee. And then it was like a, a sweetness thing. Like, oh, coffee it tastes good. And then you get addicted to it. And then it's mm-hmm. I still have it. But it's just different. I will say, I think sometimes it's socially as well. For example, why is it that every time we hang out with our, our parents, we just eat? We never do anything physical with them. That, that's funny, though, because the next topic is what is something widely tolerated by society that bothers you a lot? Oh, that doesn't bother me a lot. But I just I, I ask myself, imagine they live next door and we were just all eating all the time. It's I've not told healthy. You that. First of all, it's so expensive for it's six expensive. people because it's us two, my parents, your parents. Yeah. Adults. Yes. It's a bunch of it's six people going out to eat all the time. And like, that's not the only thing you can do. Right. And we need to exercise all of us. Like yes. We should do more stuff like that. So, so last so. time yeah. I was going to go exercise with my dad, I invited my mom and invited Dawi's mom. Mm-hmm. Right. Because she was with us. And so like we went to like a park and I set out cones and we started playing soccer, my dad and I and doing workouts. And then they just walked. Right. Mm-hmm. And like, you know. Taking someone out to nature like that, to like a grass field, sometimes it's actually liberating and it's different. What was the question again? What is something wild? What is something widely tolerated by society that bothers you a lot? Okay, perfect. You want to know what it is? Fucking drinking is annoying. I got to say that. Yeah. But go ahead. You can still go first. It's the fact that all women are in the kitchen and all the guys are on the couch. I, I think we've talked about that here on the podcast, but I agree. I will never understand that. And it's the fact that I get pushed to the kitchen. You're more than welcome to sit on the couch. I am not. Watch. What would happen if you sit on the couch? Somebody says something. Uh, I'm telling you, I have not ever been able to do it. Especially when it's our parents. Yeah. Who are very like, what's the word? I think Old if school. I was a woman, I think my mom... Mi mamá también la que se mete en la cocina de una cuando llega una casa, yo voy a ayudar de una. Exactly. That's the thing. Yeah. And it's that pressure that she feels uncomfortable if she just goes sits down. I remember, but it's not just Latin Colombian culture. It's like all no, cultures. It's a lot of because, yeah. yeah. Because I remember we were watching my Big Fat Greek wedding and like there was literally a scene I remember where all like the Greek women went into the kitchen and all the men were like discussing yeah. the news or whatever. Whatever men do, I don't know. Like, greek men yeah and so all the women were there and they were just cooking talking about recipes and all this bullshit or whatever and it's the same for us you know like our culture and then even american culture like the women make the turkey and thanksgiving usually it's like not the guy or whatever and it's so sad because i do think here in america obviously we're a lot more forward thinking in that way where women don't have to do that yeah. Don't don't do that. Yeah. But when we go to Colombia, everything changes. Tell me how, Davi. I was at your aunt's house, mm-hmm. and we were all having breakfast. And Dennis gets up to go shower, and he leaves his food. Actually, you're about to go take it to the dishwasher, or I, you're I was about to go wash it, wash it because I was that's wash it. what we yeah. do in our house. And your aunt was like, "Don't worry about it. There's three women here who could do it for you." 
Oh my God, I got so pissed. <laughs> but it's not that bad. <laughs> no, it's bad because that's what I'm trying to say. Well, first of all, I do believe that my aunt was trying to be a host and uh, I, c- I can understand. It pisses me yeah. off. At least yeah, I was going to go wash it myself. Because I would also like, like to get up and shower. No, yes. you understand. You understand. That, yeah. But and I think what the sad thing is that sometimes you guys don't see it. Mm. 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 Then as you say something, when it happens out, you just go in and uh, take a shower and normally. You don't just don't what, care what, what about did I the do? comment. About I the think comment. you left it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I did say, I, I commented. I said, I'm a modern woman. I do want to say. Yo soy una mujer moderna. I do want to say. I do want to say. I'm not a part of this. I want to say like. He can do it himself. Interactions with like my mom. Verdad. I want to say it's not because she's a woman, it's just because she's my mom. And I've been taught a certain way. Right. We were talking earlier about the whole sleeping with a bra. Mm-hmm. Once you're you've been raised a certain way, okay. taught a certain way, molded a certain way, it's hard to get out of that. Oh, so hard. Um, and then I also very clearly spoke to you in a conversation we had, like, I'm not this macho dude I'm, know, I'm not know. against women I'm not you know whatever no you're not uh, and I would love to believe that I don't treat women or you set differently from me I see you exactly as I see myself I think you do however I think there are situations where unfortunately mm. because of what you are used to mm. you don't see the other side you don't see me scrambling and trying to do things that really shouldn't be just my role, which is why when there is that little things on the table that you leave there and sometimes I have to put away for me, it's almost like it aggravates me because it's like, why do I have to do this? But there's certain things that we do within our relationship that it's just because of the way that we've assigned the things to be. No. So for example, I cook right now we have roles. I'll put the plates and then you wash. Yeah, right? you, you put them in the dishwasher. I want to correct that. You don't wash. You yes. put them in the dishwasher. Right. I want you to get it clear that when you get the plate and you put it in the dishwasher, it's not because you're a woman. It's because obviously, we've I split the roles. Yeah, we've split the roles. We've but you're about saying this. obviously. You're saying it that way. But well, I do well, because feel. Because you and I have discussed this. Yes, but I do feel like in a moment where maybe you're feeling treated as a woman you might see that as it's because I'm a woman. This, this was assigned to me. Like, I feel like there's, there's moments where I'll you, give you an example. go ahead. Okay. Yesterday was your mom's birthday, right? Yes. I was like, Why, where's the present? <laughs> it's, it's your mom. Do you have a present for her? Like reminding you, are you going to decorate? Last, the very last minute they're outside the door and I'm scrambling. I'm decorating. I'm yeah. doing everything. Right. Why was I assigned to that all of a sudden? I'm not the type to decorate day. and I'm not the type to just worry about those kinds of things. Okay. I'm assuming there's other relationships out there where it's the opposite. The guy is like, hey, we're going to look bad if we don't take anything. We're going to look bad if we don't, you know. Mm-hmm. It, it's, a, it's so hard to say because it's partly it's personality mm-hmm. and partly. And, and then that personality thing can be mis- misaligned as a gender role thing. Okay, I could see that. Do you, I, I, okay, do I do that all the time? Am I like not caring about presents usually? Yes. No. I honestly oh, don't presents? care about presents for birthdays, taking th- things to people. That's true. Yeah. That's just how I am, right? And so I don't think it's fair to say that it's because I'm a man, I expect you to get the presents and, and but then set who up. Will? Who will? Yeah, Are it's an issue. It's an issue. I have, yeah. to, I have to look at that and say, yeah. hey, maybe I'm not assigning enough priority exactly. to these things yeah. that require more of my attention. Yeah. Right. So let's also, let's talk about the party that we got invited to that we were both like, uh, Oh yeah. You want to say it? Well, okay. I received a text message of, uh, a birthday party, a birthday party. And, um, it was going to be at a club, right? It's at a club. Yeah. So I already knew that Dennis <laughs> was just going to be like, nah, you know, like, mm. cause what do we do? We don't drink. First of all, What are we going to do? Go sit there. Plus it's at 10 PM. Like we like to do our own thing at that time. So I just think it's so funny that both you and I were like, we're not going. (laughs) If the party would have been at the person's house at 10, 
I would have been more inclined to say yes. Okay. Um, but the fact that first of all, it was a Saturday. Was yeah. it a Saturday? It was a Friday. It was a Friday. Even I, I still. That's even better. Like I don't mind that yeah. at a person's house. It's the fact that it's at a club. I just think uh, it's funny. Me and clubs that... don't vibe. I've never been to a club. Don't want to be. The times that we've gone, I think it was like once or twice. I feel uncomfortable. It's just like yeah. the whole club vibe scene is off putting to me. And so that's very interesting also because I have two TikToks that actually, that actually re- reminds me about. One of them was a couple that was getting home at 930. Mm-hmm. And so she turns to her husband or whatever and says, look at us. We're young. We're hit. We, were, we went out. We did it. And then they high fived. Like they were happy that they we were home by went and did something. Not home by 930. Oh. Happy that they did it. Yeah. yeah, yeah right. Yeah. yeah. And then secondly, there was a woman who was talking about how people in their 30s and late 20s are not drinking anymore. Really? And then how how alcohol is kind of phasing out as that necessity, Mm. like that thing that's needed in order to party or be together or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. I think alcohol kind of slides under the door as like an okay social thing to do. For sure. I I swear to God. Okay. Remind, imagine this. You replace all the bottles, all the drinks in a party with cigarettes. Imagine going to a, a party where everyone's smoking as opposed to drinking mm-hmm. the same amount. So you take a... Sh- and Every, but everybody's doing it. Yeah. That's nasty. Mm-hmm. In, nasty. in my opinion, right? Mm-hmm. Now, okay. Now you're we're replacing it with alcohol. It doesn't look as bad. Well, tell me how... For our wedding, it was such an issue. Yes. For me to say, I don't want alcohol at my wedding. Yep. I didn't agree with it either, though. My God. As in, I didn't agree with Natalie that I I felt like we needed alcohol. felt like we needed alcohol. In the end, we had alcohol. In the end, we had a bunch of drunk people. Open bar. In the end, there was a bunch of drunk people like that. (laughs) And everybody was happy. Yeah. But I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, if I had been my age now, I would have been like, no alcohol. That's it. Like, I'm not going to pay for this. I disagree. But I was a little bit more lenient because I wanted everybody to have their experience. But I just really question. I can't believe you can't have a good time without alcohol at my wedding. Let me. OK. I am very. How do I say? <laughs> I just put down alcohol. Now I'm thinking that's true. Like, you know, no puede salir sin to, pues, now salir you talk to the mic. So everyone hang out and can drink that. True, because in Colombia happen a lot. Right. right. Yeah. And it's very cultural too. I get it. Um like I was saying, I'm I just trashed alcohol as a kind of like a social issue. Mm-hmm. At the same time, that's the way that I see things. I'm not gonna force that upon other people. Exactly. And I understand that a party without alcohol can be seen as a snooze fest and is boring. And other people are like, Why the fuck is there no alcohol here? And it's that's wedding. The thing. I was like, this isn't about you. This is my wedding. It's not about you coming to drink and getting drunk and then giving me your life advice. And like, that wasn't the point. I I do feel like it would drop the quality of the wedding, as sad as it may seem. And it sucks because I can say the same thing for wedding rings. That's a that's a a whole ass conspiracy of like, why do we have to give each other rings? Why is there alcohol at parties? Why do we have to celebrate birthdays? Why are there holidays? Why is there any of this? Right. It go, it's like there's so many things that are so unnecessary. Right. I do believe, well, those things make life more fun. Right. To have like those milestones. I guess to me, it was just a shocking thing that everybody was like shocked that I said no alcohol at my wedding. Well, let's say weddings, period. Why do we have weddings? Well, like is is you or it's if we went to court. For me, it was a traditional thing. Like I wanted a wedding, yeah. you know. Even though I had never grown up like dreaming of a wedding, I, I don't regret our wedding. What do you what do you think about kids that dream of a sweet fifteen, sweet sixteen, and have to have it? <laughs> I think it's cute. But like, really, in reality, like, what is the point? See, the thing is, you and I differ in this because I like to celebrate a lot of moments. You used to say, I want this nice outside grill. I'm going to be grilling on the weekends for family. You have never invited anyone over. That's true. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I know, right? 
I am that person. I'm like, let's get everybody together. Let's do a movie night. Let's do a game night. Like, but that, and that's okay. I just think it's so interesting because I was like, damn, we're going to be having all these outdoor grills. I, and I'm like, going to throw a question at the audience. Okay. Yeah. I love that. So Natalie and is her, is in her hosting phase. Uh, you know, last podcast, we talked Martha Stewart talked about the whole gardening. And along with that is hosting. I feel like hosting is a older woman who's very like cultured and it's thing. really hard you yes mm-hmm. oh if natalie in our case i'm going to use ourselves as the example but you can also assume that it, it's you and your partner or if you're single then i mean just vibe with us for a moment if natalie comes to the decision of creating a party or a get together she comes up with it who has to pay for it should natalie <laughs> pay fully for the hosting experience should i pay half of it seeing as it's my wife and my house (laughs) and so people assume that i should give half or should i give all of it which makes no sense and we don't neither of us agrees on that neither of us agrees on definitely the last one (laughs) but okay i i want to expand upon it and then you tell them your opinion which i don't even know what your opinion is (laughs) Right. And that's why I wanted to bring it up. The last one. The last one. And that I think I think we can circle that and actually say all all outings. If I propose rock climbing, I should pay for rock climbing, in my opinion. If you propose something, you, whoever proposes an outing. El que invita paga. El que invita paga. That's my opinion. Yeah. Right. It doesn't matter if the other person is enjoying it. You propose it. Right. That's my mindset on things. What do you think? Uh, let's think. Or you just can't invade. Let's go, let, let's go to play soccer. You don't have to pay anything. <laughs> but I'm but I'm talking only in a relationship that's oh, married yeah, together yeah, like yeah, this. Yeah. Yeah. Si son amigos, if it's friends and I say let's all go play soccer, I'm assuming everybody's going to pay for themselves, yeah. right? In that in that sense. No, in a relationship or like is starting flooring with somebody or start like that, I think is Yeah, like on a date. Buy, or yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's wise, obviously, the last no. option. Okay. The last option of like you pay for everything. I also don't know if the half and half is wise because why should you be spending out of your paycheck for something that I kind of, you know, create? You want to do, yeah. Yeah. But I also don't think the first one is that you shouldn't pay. Yes. I don't think I should pay for it all fully. So here's what I think it just depends, right? I think that. If it's a monthly thing that I'm doing, then yeah, it's on me to kind of figure out where is that coming from. But I do think that it wouldn't be wise for me to say, I want to throw a hosting thing every month. That's expensive as well. So I think that that's why we budget and we kind of like how we did the garden, right? We were like, okay, we're doing privacy bushes. How are we going to benefit from that? Yeah. And that's a household thing. I do believe we don't have all of that figured out and we're still kind of. Um, Finances in the home are complicated. They can be. Because it's like, okay, let's say, for example, somebody earns the more. car. Yeah. I came to the decision of buying a car. Who's benefiting from the car? Both of us. We both drive. Everyone. At, at the end of the day, though. I was the one that decided on getting the car. I might have convinced her. Maybe we both liked it in the end, but I came to the conclusion. Who pays for the car? You know, and and that's things that in a relationship you have to decide, right? And you know what's harder too is when somebody values something more than, for example, I don't value a car. Yeah. I value trips. I value experiences. You value tangible things, clothing, you know, things like that. I think I used to be more like that, though. I think I've actually changed my stance on things. Yeah. So I think that also is very difficult. Um, But that's why I also don't believe that all your finances should be mixed with your couple, because Mm -hmm. that doesn't even make sense to me. Maybe we need a whole podcast about finance. I don't think we're there yet, to be honest. Really? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm I don't saying think I can give advice. I'm I'm saying how we do things. Oh, maybe okay. Personally, That's like how we go about stuff, how we cash stuff. Yeah. How we, I, I, I do... think they're gonna help. Like, la gente le contestaría mucho. Will it help you not cut your toenail? <laughs> <laughs> that way, how how are you? Um, I don't want to. I don't want to ask him financially, or how is he financially with a with a oh, couple with a or in a, with a partner? With a partner. We're not pareja. Usted paga todo como es. No, I think 
I is on point to the partner and you understand like, yeah, I'm being paying for the two weeks. <laughs> you have to pay next. So it's the two weeks. It's the two it's week, two week cut off point. And then after and two weeks is uh, two weeks. No, no, we just, we just, let's say, know. guys, guys, David, guys. David, you give her the expensive things after the two weeks. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, you heard, you heard what you just said? What, what, I, was pago la I was actually going to ask that. What? Let's say you're in a relationship with someone. Uh huh. <laughs> maybe not as long as you. Maybe maybe a fresh relationship. Like, let's say he gets with someone. Uh huh. And so the girl uh -huh. says specifically what restaurant to go to, right? She's like, she's like looking for like a oh, Nobu, like no. Nobu, like $300, $400 bill. But he invited her out. No, she she invite her out. Basically with invited him. herself with him to there. I quiero ir a ese lugar. Vamos juntos. Yes, like that. Okay. And then that's she expects kind of a, him that's to pay. That's peer pressure though, right? Yeah. Wouldn't you feel pressured? That what would you do in that scenario? What I'm doing that scenario is say Pachi Papas. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I just say, oh, It depends if she like me or is like a random girl. Like I just meet her like in a week ago. I say no, what the fuck? <laughs> We just text more or something. <laughs> But if somebody like is being here for her and she wanna go, yes, I'm, I'm doing the best for her. You know? Oh, that's sweet. Do you do you guys think? Uh, and we can do this as that's the a last hard one. I one say. before my fun facts of the week. Uh, do you guys believe that there's also within reason a limit to a like a budget on a date? Yes. For people like I think that there's some Girls women that take advantage. That take advantage yeah. So a budget of, of dates and expect I've met, everything. I've met women like that and they're scary. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Yeah. That is scary. They are scary. Ooh. I and because it's scary that they don't fathom that. I think of that white chick scene where that one guy's like, <laughs> like, and she'll have a salad, and it's like she's like, I think not. I think not. I'll have the ribs smothered in barbecue sauce. Yeah, like, yeah. It's like that, but you know, you know, that's actually another comment that I would like from the the viewers. Mm -hmm. How many of you actually go through a full course meal, appetizer, entree, dessert? Crazy. Let's talk everything. about this. Let's be honest. Yeah. When you go on a date, we do everything. When we when we were first dating, mm. we would do everything. What do you mean everything? Like, uh, o order sea, everything. Llega it, uno y es entrada. Appetizer. Después la comida. Yeah. Después el dessert. Yeah. yeah I feel true. like you do that when you're on a date. So all three phases. If I'm being 100% with you, <laughs> I'm, I'm if, I sit, if I sit down with a guy and he goes straight into the main course, I'm like, he's cheap. Oh, <laughs> because that's the whole experience. Give me the appetizer. Give me the entree and the dessert. You know, like that's culture because in Colombia, just you eat and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> you eat what? Like la comida. Can, like if I want to take her to a good place, you're going to, I don't know, El Poblado. Yeah. Or but some pa but, good pasta. But if you want to take her, like you just, you're a friend and you just meet, you know, like. Yeah. But I'm so not going to be difficult. Way. I'm not going to be difficult. I'm not going to be like, we can't get that. Like, I'm not going to be like that. If he says a meal, we go into the meal. And you know what? May no, I do think it's a little cheap. Really? Uh, yeah, I do. So like, we go to like a sushi place. I feel that same. You expect you think, but appetizers, no, but entree, everything. You think everything? if the guy, you like the guy, you think that take up the points to him no 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 it doesn't yeah, but you does. know what does I take off what, what does yeah, i can't feel I can it feel too it. yeah You're lying. Me, i'm not lying let me tell you, <laughs> yeah, <the laughs> let girl, me tell you. i don't know what girl Hold like on. that <laughs> let me tell you let me tell you i feel like if he doesn't ask me then i feel like i didn't like that what how do you feel about guys that order for the woman I hate like oh, like yeah. like in white chicks like the she'll have a salad i hate that you don't even know me Mm. That makes no sense. Do you know what allergies I have? Like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I don't like that. that she is... have to order what she want. Yeah. But mm. don't start with que, como en donde están las rubias. What is it? Ella White pidió. Chicks. White chicks, sí. Que ella llegó y pidió unas carnes. Costillas, sí, yeah. 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 
Yeah. Ooh, I don't say, oh, yeah, Rose. But you know what I, I also know. feel? I feel like sometimes the waiters are the ones that push this onto They're you. They're supposed to. And I hate that. I also hate that. I think that's not very kind. You know what I learned a couple days ago? What? That the waiter gives you the wine to taste. Uh-huh. Not to taste it. It's to see if it's gone bad. What do you mean? That's the whole essence of a wine tasting at the beginning of a meal. Like they'll come with like the wine mm-hmm. and then they'll pour it and you're you're kind of supposed to aerate it, give it like a small taste, but you're also kind of supposed to ask for the bottle. Uh, supposedly there comes a point in time where wine goes bad. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. My, and you're supposed to no taste the quality of the wine in terms of how bad it is and maybe ask for a different bottle. But it's not that you don't want that wine. I didn't know that. I didn't either. Guys, I'm really stuck on the, the <laughs> appetizer meal and thing because I feel like I'm a simple girl. So wait, I do. You're simple, but you're not that simple. No, I guess. no, I am. But I think w- what would have gotten me is if the guy orders for me. I, I think that if he goes directly into the meal, you guys don't believe me, but I don't think it would be that bad. I just think if he doesn't ask me like, hey, are you in the mood for something? Like, I are can't you, believe Do you want though, an appetizer? If we go to like a Colombian restaurant and I get us both bandejas that you would even want an appetizer or a dessert handsome not anymore i'm saying when i know we that first started yeah but that's like crazy can you, you ma- imagine how much food that would be it's a lot <laughs> do you know how full we used to get yeah it was insane but what you- about girls that over order in order to take some to go who does that i know someone who does that not they, you they don't over order they just don't finish their meal no but like but they Whatever. Okay, uh, let's not go there. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's got to be women out there that that over or uh, was that a cartoon I no, saw? Someone would. over ordered on purpose to take to go because they actually had a child. All right, here's what I want to know from you guys. <laughs> yeah. That's horrible. That actually, that's another one. What if they have a kid? They take the kid on the date. You have to pay for the kid. Why are they on the no, date I with don't the think. kid? That is messed up. What if they have? They can't pay for like a nanny or something. Then they should communicate that with you. Damn, then you I got, take my key to the to the date. You take oh, your kid sorry. on a date and you gotta pay today. for the kid. <laughs> wow. Can we can we rain check this for next week? I actually want to ask that question on the next podcast too. I feel like that's pretty deep. What? Once once some, you're in a relationship with someone who has a child, things change completely. And we've ne- we've sure. never experienced something like no. that. We can't even imagine having kids ourselves. Okay, here's what imagine. I want to know from you guys. Damn. If, okay. there, if there's a girl who you're out with and she does start ordering more than once, you're... I start sweating. <laughs> I start shitting what breaks. Say, I'd be worried. Do, do you guys budget for these oh, days? Oh, I, I, I just be, be quiet. And like... <laughs> Uh, what I, what do you have to say? You I say I, you are so hungry. Or what? <laughs> if I start noticing she's getting too much, I'll slip the, cre- the debit card. Girl, the, what you mean? The debit card's going back in the wallet. Credit card's coming out. <laughs> can't I'm, go, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell the the messenger. I'm gonna say, take your card out. Say like one card out. <laughs> <laughs> not not uh, that way being like, are you hungry or something? Of course she's hungry. That, that's why you show them and you say, do you want this or this or this? And then you give them options. And then you block out filet mignon with your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> you, you block out the expensive ones. Oh, man, that's rough. Damn. I think even rougher if um, <laughs> all of a sudden, like for me, let's say the guy turns it on me. And like the waiter's like, who's going to pay? I mean, I feel like it's polite to say I'll pay for half. I'm going to be honest. I would do that well, for the first date. Yeah, I was going to actually ask you that. I would do that. For the visa, I think you. But if he, I think if it's he a has, boss ass move for a girl to say I'll pay half. You have to, I feel. No, nah, fuck that. No one's going to do that. Nah, no one's going to do that. I would no do, one that. do that. I would say that. That's, That's why I like having W on, on the show. He backs me up. <laughs> no, but I would do that. <clears throat> yeah, you. Yeah, Natalie, yeah, you, so, but no some, one would do that. Some girls you know, are, are cute. Some girls, w- the primera novia que yo tuve, she, she, <laughs> she say, oh, I want to pay. Y yo me que, oh, no. <gasps> pero, pero but after that, que after pagar that, a ella. no, of course I don't accept that, of course. So you paid? I pay for everything, of course. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. because if the guy does that. La, primer, la, primer, la primera cita, sí, lo pagué todo ya. Pues aquí en Estados Unidos, en Colombia sí pagaba todo. Aquí en Estados yeah. Unidos no pagó. Yeah, this no pagó is gender todo. shit. Yeah, I want to be a woman now. I don't know. It's like, God yeah. damn, you gotta pay for everything. As a woman guy? can eat free so much. Like, woman, girls just go to bars a guy. Just to oh, eat I want to go out. 
Guys yeah. gonna pay for everything. That's rough. I, I do admit. The culturally, that part is really. I, I can imagine a girl having like ten dudes on her phone. Yeah, simply just eat. free. Yes, that sucks. Yo, Jonathan, you want to go on a date? Blah blah blah. Take me on. And no, go, no, no and happy ending. No nothing. Just take me back home when I'm done. And like, the <laughs> girls can do that. You say, yeah. Like, let me tell you, oh, me llevas a la casa. Ya, uno que le va a decir. I don't think care how attractive a guy could be. He does and not have ten. So many guys do that. Pay for girl food yeah. and just. Take it out and take just picture and everything. There's no know. way a dude can get. I don't pay his food. Paid. Yo veo que la niña no le interesa nada de mí. Yo veo que solamente me está usando. Pero yo uno nota cuando hay conexión y cuando no. I feel. Exactly, yeah. So you don't pay. You say no, or you say half and half. Wendy's four for four. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. No, Anyways, no, no. Uh, give me a song though. Yeah, I have two fun facts of the week for you guys. <laughs> okay, okay. These are amazing, <laughs> amazing, amazing. So fun. <laughs> So as most of you know, we've recently had a solar eclipse. Um, and so it got me this got me looking for like space facts. I'm into space. Yeah. I like that kind of stuff, right? So we have an international space station. There's people living in space. Have you ever wondered how they do their laundry? No. So they actually wear the same clothes for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then when they get dirty, they don't wash it. They actually put it in a bin, launch it out. And lit it on fire. So they're, they don't do laundry in space. Hmm. I thought that that was actually very curious. How does a woman deal with her period in space? That is very interesting. I do not know. <laughs> that's, a, that's actually a very good one. I, I saw that they were in touch with a guy. Let you know uh, on the netbook. Yeah, I can search that. <laughs> but, but there was an interview with a guy on the space station and he was going about talking about how to brush your teeth and go to the yes. bathroom and all these things, which is obviously very complicated because it's not the same as being here. Right. I don't know if they've ever interviewed a female person living in space station and then like the feminine stuff that goes along with that. Mm -hmm. Right. That's very interesting. Do they go to the bathroom the same what way? What do you think about the like eclipsing? Oh, the eclipse is cool, but the, we didn't get to see it. Well, it was funny because we did see the live television where people were getting married in Arkansas. That was hilarious. <laughs> it was very funny. And we did also hear, this is very unfortunate, that Amazon was selling a lot of fake glasses. Mm -hmm. <gasps> That's so horrible. I was seeing that the search term, my eyes hurt, went up um, like 300% yesterday or the day before, whenever that solar eclipse was. What? Yeah, there was a lot of people that were showing up to their eye doctors with pain from their eyes because they were like looking at it directly. People are dumb sometimes. I want to okay. be your eye doctor right now. I want to <laughs> make a bang. Oh my God. Tell me how our fucking, our, our main road has like 20 dentist offices. How many dentists do we need? Okay. That's too much. I had to get that off my chest. And then the next one <laughs> fact is that there is a very high percentage of people over 65 in Japan. We're actually going into Japan in a month and a half or whatever soon and so 28 percent of everyone in japan is over the age of 65 hmm. and so that was very curious to me i looked into so why i looked into why and there's actually two reasons why mm -hmm. so it seems like first of all care for older people is very good in japan they mm -hmm. take care of their elderly mm -hmm. and they live very happily yeah. and so a lot of them are old they just don't die. They have a long lifespan. Okay. And then secondly, birth rates have gone down. Mm -hmm. And so we're. this is the first time in a long time that a first world country like Japan is experiencing a population decline. And the world is very intrigued to see what might happen because as a business, they have less consumers for the first time in a long time. Mm. And as a business, you want more people to buy. And as a country, you want more people to tax. And then if there's not enough people and there's not enough consumers, what happens? Hmm. So pe people are very, very curious to see what, what's going to happen with Japan. Hmm. Very, very interesting facts, honey. Anything you have to add to any of that? Well, I, I did. I like the whole feminine hygiene thing in space. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of interesting. No, I was just I was thinking the same thing. Maybe people are having less kids. And I, well, I wonder why Japan specifically. Hmm. I know it's happening here, too. For sure. There's something going on here where people aren't getting married, aren't having kids. Like there's this whole, but it's more of like an economical issue. Mm -hmm. I wonder if it's a economical issue in Japan as well. Something tells me it's not. Mm -hmm. 
Very cool. Hmm. Anyways, thanks for watching and tuning into yeah. today's show. We appreciate you every Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Can I get that music? You, you always leave us with something that is very deep. So deep yes, I, guess, I It got me really thinking. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Why Japan? Bye. Why Japan? Why so many people? Why no kids? Bye. <laughs>